Hey, this is Pastor Hannah, my YouTube family. I'm excited about the month of November. The entire month of November is all about God did it. I need you to think about something that God did for you. And this is going to be the month of being thankful and grateful about everything that God did for us right here on this YouTube channel. I'm excited that we're almost at the end of the year. Hey, YouTube, we're doing it together. I love you. I just want to say thank you to everyone that has made this week, this week, an amazing week. Um, <laughs> and everyone that knows me know that I don't like a lot of celebration because I never wanted to look like I'm taking his credit or his glory, but I have to know how to receive love. And so I'm grateful for all the love, um, all the expressions of love, um, everything. Just know that I am thankful. And to my new life, life family, I don't care where I go, I look forward to coming back to you. You got to hear that. Um, this is family for me, and I am a happy man. I am a happy man. All right, I want you to get your Bibles, because this is the last sermon that we're going to preach on um, God did it. So even as I stand here on, I celebrate this week, I want you to hear me loud and clear. No one did this but God. Um, I am born and raised in Chicago. I am a product of the Chicago Housing Authority. I grew up in Oblahome. My address was 1242 West 13th Street. My telephone number was 421-5934. That sound like a prison number, don't it? Because if it was, it was your DNA, you'd never forget where you grew up at. And I am amazed that even as a pastor, that the first person that my mother left me with, my babysitter, is a member of this church. Like, wow. Um, the girl I took on junior prom, Stephanie Staten, is a member of this church. Um, people that I knew in grade school, Miss Loretta, who you saw on the screen, I've been knowing her since I was 13 or 14 years old. And, and I look at how God has brought us. Nobody did it but God. And that's my testimony. How many of y'all know that he's brought you a mighty long way? Some of y'all, you shouldn't even be here. He has literally carried you on eagle's wings. And I need you to open your mouth and say, God did it. God did this thing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Can we do just do a recap? On the first week that we taught this, we taught it and we told you what? Bring it up on the screen. God heard me. We talked to you about Jonah. Was He was in the belly of the whale, and he says, out of the belly of hell cried I unto the Lord. How many of y'all know that when you cried, God heard you? You are in your life right now because God heard you in your lowest state. In the second week, we showed you how God chose you, how God literally let seven of David's brothers come in the house and they say, is there anyone else? He said, there yet remains the youngest. Where is he? He's in the field. Listen to this. And the Bible says, we won't sit down until he come. Can I tell some of y'all something? He chose you and the party won't start until you show up. Come on here. They can't get delivered until you show up. Listen, the last week we told you when he delivered me, we showed you how the son could not come on his own, but the father brought a son. What does that mean? God's going to deliver who's connected to you. Did you hear what I just said? I told you last week, your children are not going to hell. Your friends are not going to hell. Today, I want you to hear me loud and clear, and I pray that you could hear me. I pray that if some of you all, if you could... Come off social media for one minute. I can help you. I can help you, really. If you could just put your inbox on hold. Ain't nobody inboxing you. Please pay attention. Somebody's mic is on. You got to be careful you don't cuss. I heard somebody's mic is talking. Y'all better be careful that you don't let something come through the system. Hmm? And that wasn't the Holy Ghost I heard. I know flesh when I hear it. It's something going on in the background that's coming through the monitors. So check everything, all right? So here, here we clearly. Today we want to teach on use me. Use me. I need some of y'all to hear me. How he's going to use you is not going to be on the stage. For everyone in the sound of my voice, in the church, 
Everybody's fighting over a microphone. Everybody fighting over one stage. And there's only so many that you can reach on one stage. The call that's on your life is bigger than four walls. He's literally about to enlarge your territory. For someone under the sound of my voice, I need you to hear me. You are international. I need you to download the WUS app because you're going to have to make international phone calls. You're going to have to FaceTime somebody in another country. Oh, we out here now. We out here. I want you to go to Acts 16 and we're going to talk about when the third person that was going to take over the church after Christ. When Christ died, he handed it to Peter, then Peter handed it to Paul. I need you to show you the conversion of this, this next person. And for many of you all, you might be next or you might be assigned to push who's next. Can you handle pushing somebody who's going to be greater than you? Oh, we out here now. We out here now. Can we talk just one minute? Look at me. We're going to talk about the conversion of this man named Paul. His name was Saul. He's literally a persecutor of the church. He has an encounter with Christ on the road of Damascus. He's stricken off the horse. He's blinded. He's led to the back of a house. You ready? Now the question is, he's in a corner shaking because he can't wrap his brain around. How does a man that is educated, how does a man that was a persecutor, how does a man that knew the law now blind and in a corner? Question, who is God going to send to get that man out of the corner? Who's going to have to be the next person to take over? Now I need you to hear me loud and clear. It's more than just a man in the corner. Look at me. If you look in that corner, there's a man that he's eventually going to write 13 books of the Bible. He's eventually going to write 67% of the New Testament. He's literally going to start 14 churches. It's not just a man. This is a, 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 a shaker in the corner. He's going to go on three missionary journeys. He's going to perform numerous miracle signs and wonders. And the question is, who can God trust to go get him out of the corner? Because everything is on hold until the next person come and get him out. Question, who's in the corner waiting on you? Who's, who, who is, who's the next millionaire in the corner? Who's the next business owner in the corner? Who's the generational breaker in the corner? Who's in the corner? Look at me. But they can't get out the corner until you connect with them. Everybody got to hear me now. It's called divine connection. It's going to be a click in the spirit. Some of y'all are in the corner and God's going to sleep somebody to you. It's going to be a click. This is why you don't have time to just be around anybody. I need to be around somebody who's going to click in my spirit. Either I'm going to push you or I'm going to grab you. I need you to make sure you're at least around somebody. Do what I tell you to do and I promise you it's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal this stuff later. I need you to reach around and you touch three people and you're just going to say click, click, click. There's a connection in your section. There's a connection in your section. There's a connection in your section. Who is God going to send to go get you out of the corner? Who is God going to send to go get somebody that's great out of the corner? Who is God going to use? Who is God going to use? He's the line. Who is God going to use? And some of y'all think that you have to be a licensed minister. Some of y'all think that you have to have a college degree. Man, look at the outward appearance, but God see your heart. Is there anybody in the building? I don't need fame. I don't need fortune. I don't need a platform. I just want God to get the glory out of my life. Who am I talking to? Look at me. Look at me. Who am I talking to? Use me any way that you want to use me, but just get the glory out of my life. Just lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who is God going to use? Who is God going to use? I need you to hear me. I am watching the church. I am watching the church get caught up in, in titles and positions. I am watching people. Everybody feel like you got to be the head. Don't nobody want to be the tail. Don't nobody want to be the pusher. Everybody want to be the main person. Everybody can't be the main person. But watch me. But they can't become main until they come in contact with you. 
You cannot be who you're assigned to be until you come in contact with that. Watch me. And some of y'all, you keep playing people because they don't, they don't look the way you think that they could look. But what if that's the person that God has sent to push you? I need you to hear me. See, in church, everybody need a title. Everybody need a position. Everybody need a clergy collar. In certain denominations, you got to have a rope around your neck. You got to have a cross around your neck. You got to have a doily on your head. Can I tell you something? He's about to use somebody that don't have a clergy collar. He's about to use somebody that don't dress like a preacher. He's about to use somebody that don't look like a missionary. You got the look, but I got the oil. Come on here. You got the title, but I got the power. Come on, y'all. Let's talk. Come on. Lean in. Lean in. So who's he going to use? Now I need your attention because I am in the room with some major people and you are a pusher. Mm. You are a pusher. Who does he use? Can I show you something? He uses a man by the name of Ananias. Can everyone open your mouth and repeat after me? Hello, my name is Ananias. Come on, say that again. Hello, my name is Ananias. Now, who is this man known as Ananias? I need your attention. Please, I promise you I'm going to help you. If you look at the screen, I can introduce you to who he is. In Acts 9 and 10, it says, In Damascus, there was, pay attention, a disciple named Ananias. All we know is, look at me, he's only a disciple. He's not a prophet. He's not a priest. He's not a preacher. He's not a bishop. He's not an apostle. He's only small d. Disciple. But the hand of God is on his life. And I used to say this. Some of y'all, before I was John Hanna, people used to play me. They used to think you ain't nothing but a flunky running up behind your pastor. You ain't nothing but a little armor bear. Oh my God. You ain't nothing but a youth leader. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. And some of y'all, you let these people make you feel like you small, but the hand of God is on your life. Look what I used to tell people. You play me like I'm a cheeseburger, but inside I know I'm a Big Mac. I'm two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. I'm not even your regular bun. I got sesame seeds, boo. You better recognize, and some of y'all are sitting next to somebody that don't have a title, don't have a position. They not a prophet, they not a priest, but they got oil. They the ones that God's going to use to push your crazy self. I need you to make sure you sit next to a pusher. Do me a favor, you ain't got to say nothing. Just Can you just touch somebody and just give a slight push? When I push you, I push you into your money. When I push you, I push you into your destiny. When I push you, I push you into the call that's on your life. When I push you, I push you to be everything that he created you to be. Look at me, and I'm not jealous of you either. I don't want what you have. I can't do what you do, but I'm glad that God put you next to me to push you to be everything he created you to be. Don't play, y'all. I need you to turn around and push three people say, go, go, go. Go. They waiting on you. 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 They can't get out until you show up. They can't get out until you show up. They can't get out until you show up. Hey, Denzel, they can't get out until you show up. They can't get out until you show up. When you show up, you going to pull them. When you show up, they're going to be everything that God created you to be. The next is in the corner. The next is in the corner waiting on you to show up. The next is in in the corner waiting on you to show up. He keep calling you. And you be talking about, oh, he ain't talking to me. No, he talking to you. Because if he use you, you're not going to take the credit. If he use you, you're going to give God all the glory. Oh, 
come over here. You got to go get them. So let's talk Ananias. How, what, like, how did he become this Ananias? Now I need your attention because this is where some of y'all going to get the revelation of your life. Are you ready? How God used Ananias. I need you to hear me. It wasn't a stage. It wasn't a big platform. It wasn't an auditorium of people. It was not, it was not a large audience. You got to hear me. I'm going to use you behind the scene, but your push is going to affect the whole scene. Let's talk. Look, look, look at me. So how does he use him? Now I need your attention. Before he can do it, watch me. Now imagine, it's in the corner, but it can't come out the corner until you show up. In other words, Pastor Jamal says something. He says, he said, what was it? He says, your, um, your call is not optional, but your response is. Watch me. Your call is not optional. God can call you, Antoine, but you have a choice if you're going to do it or not. Why? Because he gave you a will. You are not a robot. You are a free-willed individual. He's not going to put you in a headlock and make you do anything. He can call you, but how you answer is up to you. Can I say? And you have to answer. You have to answer. And he will stay in the corner until you answer. Everything is... What if I told you somebody's healing is waiting on you to answer? What if I told you somebody's deliverance is waiting on you to answer? But you keep tripping, talking about, but I don't have license. You keep tripping, talking about, but I'm just a regular bitch member. He's using bench members. He's using people who don't want the stage. He's using people that don't have reserved seating. He's using people who don't have a title or position. So when they sit next to you, it's a click in the spirit. Can we talk? Let's talk. Lean in. Lean in. I need your attention. I need your attention. You have to answer. You gotta answer. He's calling you. What do you mean? Look at the screen. In Damascus, it was a disciple by name Ananias. Here's the line. Here's the line. Here's the line. Here's the line. Look at this. The Lord, the Lord called him. Well, who called you? Man didn't call you. God called you. Mm. God called you to do something that everybody can't see. God called you to do something that you can't even tell nobody. Because if you told them God called you, they're going to make you question your call. Come on here. The Lord called him. The Lord called him in a vision. What that mean? I'll let you see what can't nobody else see. Hear the line. And he called him by name. Look at me. I keep telling some of y'all to release your name. Watch me. Because heaven will grab your name and call it to do something that's going to be amazing. You sitting up here waiting on your friend to call you. You sitting up here waiting on a company to call you. You sitting up here waiting on people to call you. I would rather the Lord call me than you call me. Because if you call me, you're going to call me with stipulation, stipulations. But if he call me, he going to call me to do what he tell me to do. Watch me. The Lord called him. And he called him by name. Look at me. He literally said his name. Ananias! Look at me. I read a book that said when Jesus went to the grave site of Lazarus, he had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Had he just said, come forth, everybody would have gotten up. But I came to tell you, watch me, he's about to be specific in calling your name. Nobody will be able to get up and do what you do but you. Boy, I need you to release your name. I know, look at me, 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 look at me. Some of y'all are so carnal, you don't know when to get spiritual. And I'm telling you that in 2024, you're about to get a divine call. I'm telling you that your name is about to hit the spirit ram and God's about to take you places that you never thought that you would go and you're about to do some things that you never thought that you would do I know you get sick of saying it but I'm going to keep making you bring your name up until your name is called on the count of three I need you to release your name in the spirit ram one two three John Hannah come on look at me 
You ready? You ready? Look at me, Jessica. Watch me, watch me. So when he calls you, when he calls you, your response is up to you. Now, either you can say, no, I'm not going to answer. You can even tell him no. You can say, no, I don't want to do it. Why don't you want to do it? Because you're worried about what people are going to think. Do you not want to do it because you feel like you don't have the experience? Do you not want to do it because you feel like you don't have the background? Can I tell you something? But you're only a disciple. His, 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 this is when Ananias became my friend because he only said two words, yes, Lord. Look at me. Yes, Lord. Watch me. He said yes before he knew what he was called to do. I'm going to say that again. He said yes before he even knew what he was called to do. Why does he say yes so fast, Antoine? Because he knows that God is the author and the finisher of his faith. He knows that God has already predestined him for greatness. Why would God call me and then send me to fail? Why would God call me and send me not to succeed? So without me even knowing what I'm called to do, I trust God enough to tell him, yes, Lord. Those of you that trust God, that he gets, he's going to order your steps, that he's going to take you places that you never thought that you would go, that you're going to do things that you never thought that you would me. You don't have to tell me yes, but if you're willing to go where the Lord is taking you, if you don't mind, wait, 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 wait. So the difference is, can I get a mic stand? Give me a mic stand. Give me a mic stand. So this is the problem. We're raising a generation without teaching them some of the basic things that we used to do. And some of the basic things that we used to do, they used to literally put us on the altar. And they would just keep saying, just tell the Lord yes. Just tell the Lord yes. All you got to do is say yes, Lord. So why do you keep telling the Lord yes? Because the more you tell him yes, he kill your will. Look at me. So when I was in college and early at the service, there was a young man that was here by the name of Chris Etheridge. Chris Etheridge was my friend at Alabama State. We met each other when we were 19 years old. And he flew into Chicago to, to, to come and celebrate my birthday. I'm 60. We met at 19. Here I am, 60. And we remember when we was in college, we had no organ. I don't want no music. We were going to the dormitory, in the dormitory, in 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Not knowing what tomorrow holds. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your call on my life. Not my will, but your will be done. My soul says yes. Go into my stubborn areas. Tear down every wall until you get a yes. Say, get, put a yes in my spirit. Look how some of y'all looking at me. What have I told you? Your release is in your yes. What have I told you? You can't get what God have for you until you give him a yes, Lord. Uh, do me a favor. I need everybody under the sound of my voice. Forget about everybody in the building. I need you. I'm about to teach you something. It's called old school Terry service. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you this. If you don't clap your hands, I'm going to jump off this stage and bust you in the head with this microphone and make you tell the Lord yes. Because it's too much locked up in your yes. Do me a favor, on the count of three, clap your hands and you keep saying yes, Lord, until I tell you to stop. One, two, three, yes, Lord. Close your eyes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your assignment. Clap your hands. Yes to what you want me to do. Yes to how you want me to do it. Yes to being obedient. Yes in the stubborn area. Come on, y'all. A few more sick tickets. Open me up and holler. Yay! Yay, God! Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Clap your hands. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on in, 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 come on in. Yes, 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 yes. Come on in. Break, break. The door won't open until you tell him yes. Come on here. The way won't be made until you tell the Lord yes. Come on, every business owner, every man, every woman, every person in your 20s, you cannot do what God called you to do until you tell him yes. It's uncomfortable, but do you trust him? If you trust the Lord, clap your hands and tell him yay!
Door open. Door open. Door open. You ready to go? Door open. Your yes is your passcode. Your yes is your passcode. Your yes will get you to your next assignment. One more time, climb your hands. You disciple. You don't have a title. You don't have a position. Hear me clearly? But you got a yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'm going to leave. Yes, God. My soul says yes. My will says yes. And you ain't even see that need you to push three people say hey you gotta go you gotta go you gotta go you gotta go do what he told you to do you gotta go be who he told you to be you gotta go get who he told you to get you gotta go start what he told you to start you gotta go be everything that he created you to be you're bigger than the corner you're bigger than yeah yeah Ready? Have a seat. Have a seat. Let's move fast. After he said yes, 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 then he got his assignment. He did not get his assignment until after he said yes. And then came the challenge of the assignment. Now I need you to go. Look at me. I need you to go because I got a man in the corner. His name is Saul, but he going to flip to Paul, but he can't flip until you meet Saul. Come on, let's talk. And I need you to go. I need you to go. I need you to go. And then, 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 watch me. Then the fear came. Watch me. It is normal to have some hesitation. It is normal to be a little fearful. He said, God, you're sending me to a man, to a man, to a man, to a man, to a man who has persecuted the church. And for some of y'all, what he's calling you to do is going to be a big challenge. Can I tell you this? It's one of the biggest challenges you've ever had. Can I show you on the screen? Look at the screen. The Lord said to Ananias, go. Oh, exclamation point. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to three groups of people. Watch me. He got to hit the Gentiles. Then he got to deal with the kings. And then he going to deal with the people of Israel. But he can't go until you go. He cannot get up until you go get him. So after he answered, then he went. Oh, my God. For some of you all, I need you to hear, hear me loud and clear. He's about to relocate you. He's about to reposition you. Oh, my God. If you look at the screen, and the Bible says, and Ananias went. In other words, he had to go. Some of y'all are praying that they come to you. Look at me. You praying that your next show up at your door post. The Lord said, no, I'm going to call you and you're going to go get it. Oh, my God. I don't like the way some of y'all are looking. Because you want everything delivered to you on a platter. Oh, my God. But he's about to make you get up. He's about to make you turn where you didn't think you were going to turn. He's about to make you go where you never thought that you were about to go. Hear me loud and clear. I hear this word and I did not hear it at the 930. He's about to enlarge your territory. God, please let this word hit like never before in this service. I pray, God, that you would wake the spirit of Ananias up in this building. Come on, y'all. I need you to push three people around and say, hey, 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 go, 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 go. He's about to enlarge your territory. He's about to enlarge your territory. He's telling you to go like he told Moses to go. He's telling you to go like Jesus told the ten lepers to go. He's telling you to go like Jesus told the blind man to go. He's calling you out of your comfort zone. He's calling you out of your comfort zone. He's calling you out of your comfort zone. 
God, you're going to apply for jobs that you don't even have the education to go with. He's calling you out of your comfort zone. He's calling you out of your comfort zone. He's going to have you to go into communities that you never thought that you would live in. But he's about to make sure that you plant with exactly where you're supposed to be. Because there's somebody that in that community that he wants you to reach. Come on here. He's about to get you out of your comfort zone. He's about to make you take your seat belt off. He's about to make you walk the plane while it's taking off. Why? Because you're going someplace that you never thought that you were about to go. I need your help because you sit next to somebody who appear to be a little lazy. The devil is a liar. We're about to get everything up out of you but then you realize your sleeping days are about to be over. Your sitting back chilling days are about to be over. You are about to be a game changer. I need you do what I tell you to do. Do what I tell you to do. Push three people around you say I need you to go, go, go. He answered, then he went. He answered, then he went. He answered, then he went. Yes, Lord, now go. Yes, Lord, now go. Yes, Lord, now go. He answered, then he went. He answered, then he went. He answered, then he went. He went into some territory that he was reluctant to go into. He went into some territory that he was afraid to go into. But I would be a fool to doubt God now. I don't believe that he brought me this far for me to let me fail now those of y'all that believe that you're gonna be successful here's the line in everything you do y'all ain't am I in the room with some non-believers am I in the room oh this is new for some of y'all this is new for some of y'all you ready let's go let's go so he answered and then he went he answered have a seat he answered and then he went he answered yes Lord and then he went towards his assignment and then he went towards his assignment when he got towards his assignment now I need your attention you're not just put in a certain place just to look at it but you sit there to meet a need the only reason that you're being sent, I need your attention, I need your attention. He only sends for you because there's a need. If there's no need, then there's no need for you. The problem is everybody expects the assignment to be about them. This ain't about you. This is who's in the room with you. Cause they can't get up until you hit the room. Oh my God. But the enemy want to make us self-centered. That everything got to revolve around you. You got to lay hands on yourself and you got to speak you up. No, you can't handle what he going to go through. You don't even have to go through what he going through. But, uh, but he can't do what he do until you do what you do. He can't do what, look at me. He can't do what he do until you do what you do. So you're going to have to touch what you've been afraid of. Hmm. Let's talk. You're going to have to literally physically touch what you used to pull back from. It's almost like when he told Moses, throw your staff on the ground. It's a snake. He ran back. He said, no, don't run from it because that's where your power is. Reach out and touch what you used to be scared of. Everybody, for God has not given you a spirit of fear. Wherever he leads you, you about to conquer it with authority. I need you to make sure you ain't sit next to a punk. I need you to make sure you sit next to a warrior. Intercessors pray because there's something different about this 1230 service. There's something big about to happen in the building at 1230. I'm so glad you didn't let that little snow stop you because God's about to meet your push. Oh my God, I'm so glad that you didn't stay in bed. Some of y'all had to go through hell just to get here. But God said, I'm about to honor your push. I need you to push three people around you and say, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Touch him, 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 touch him. Because he, he answered, he went, he touched. Your next thing to do is to touch. 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 Everybody look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't you get sick of me and Pastor Glenn. Touch your neighbor. 
touch a neighbor. I just want to come to church and not touch anyone or have anyone touch me. Wrong church. Because when I touch you, your life going to flip. When I touch you, chains going to break. When I touch you, demons going to flee. When I... Okay, so let's talk, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Ooh, I'm gonna come through here today. I feel it's about, I feel like, I feel like it's about to be an explosion. I can't even explain this. I can't even explain this. You ready? All right, so watch this. So he placed, he placed, first he answered, then he went, he got over his fears and he went, and then when he got in the room, he placed his hands on him. He touched him. Why the touch? Everybody now, I need your attention. Why the touch, the physical touch? And some of y'all, I don't like people touching me. Is that God? Or is that the enemy trying to keep you in bondage? Let's talk, let's talk. Can I show you what a physical touch can do? Bring it up, three things. A physical touch can inspire positive thinking. Shut up. A physical touch can expand trust. So if somebody trusts you, they re when somebody touch you, they release you. Shut up. One touch can blow the gates off. <laughs> One touch can open the world up to you. Shut up. Number two, number two, when somebody touch you, it reduces social anxiety and stress. So when the right person touch you, it gives you a spirit of peace. Mm. Ooh, shut up. And you've been going to therapy and all you had to do was get the right one to touch you. Shut up. Do you know how many thousands of dollars you could have saved had you just been in an anointing atmosphere? Here's my line. Now this messed me up. Watch this. Watch this. Now this one messed me up. A physical touch, shut up, can boost your immune system. Shut up. And, and lower blood pressure, which means that one touch can make your body come into alignment. Ah. And some of y'all, you drain, but it's like a dead battery. But you put some cables on it and you start giving it a jump. And one touch, oh, first he answered, then he went. Then he touched. First he answered, then he went, then he touched. First he answered, then he went, then he touched. Why you swing your arm? I'm winding up. I'm winding up. Because when we lay hands on you, we're about to push you into be everything that God created you be. First he answered, then he went, then he touched. I need you to get ready because you're about to release somebody to open their business. You're about to release somebody to take the world. You're about to release somebody to go get their passport. You're about to release release somebody to break generational curses you better release somebody to get cancer out of their body you better release somebody to serve their gift of don't you play with me don't you play with me don't you play with me everybody get on your feet get on your feet get on your feet get on your feet first he answered then he went and then he touched first he answered then he went and then he touched first he answered then he went and then he touched and after he touched then he spoke and after he touched then he spoke after he touched then he spoke spoke for he answered then he went after he went then he touched after he touched then he released the word then he released the word Ooh. then he prophesied Ooh. Ooh. what did he speak watch me he didn't call him a murderer he didn't call him a criminal he said, brother Saul, which means your title is about to change. Ooh. I need you to touch somebody and say, your title is about to change. Ooh. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Please, please look at me. Jesus, why are you here? Why are we together in this room? Why are we together in this room? Because Jesus appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. Look at me. He knocked your behind down 
off that horse, he made you feel like you had hit rock bottom because he knew that he wanted to pick you up. The fall should have killed you, but it did not kill you. He only broke you to make you. He only crushed you to put the broken pieces back together again. This fall was intentional. Did you hear what I just said? This fall was intentional. That's why he made them quit you. That's why he made them fire you. That's why he made them reject you. That's why he made them put you out. Why? Because this fall is intentional. Oh, my brother, this fall is intentional. And it's so that we, 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 we can get in the room together. So watch what I say to you. Watch what I say to you. First I answered, then I went. When I went, then I touch. When I touch, then I speak. And what I speak will be your reality. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's back it up. <laughs> Let's rewind. First he answered, then he went. After he went, then he touched. After he touched, then he spoke. First was brother. Brother, I'm so glad you failed. I want to thank God for your crushing season. I want to thank God that you're presently blind. But your present is not your permanent. Because if you monitor the words that are about to come out of my mouth, I'll give you a glimpse of your future. Number one, number one, he has sent me, he has sent me, he has sent me so that you can get back what you lost. You are about, oh my God, I hear this, Pastor Glenn. You're about to recover all. What I'm about to say, Sheyando, Saya, Monday, Leke, Rosato, Mata, Randa, Rabosiande. Yes, you about to get, you about to get it back. You are about to get it back. You about to get your joy back. You about to get your peace back. You about to get your smile back. Everything that the enemy thought he took from you, you about to get it back. Oh, oh, I hear this. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you, listen carefully. You about to get it back with increase. Oh my God. Now the only ones that can praise God right there. Oh, okay. Okay, calm down. Calm down, John. 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 I'm excited about your future. I came to get you out your corner. I came to get you out your corner so you could get somebody out their corner. I came to get you out your corner so you can go get somebody else out their corner. He gonna deliver you so you can deliver somebody else. He gonna bless you so you can bless somebody else. He gonna heal you so that you can make sure that somebody else get the healing. So after, after, after you, after, after, after you've recovered, after you've recovered, then you gonna get what you never had. Mm. You about to be filled. Oh my God. Hear the word of the Lord. I didn't, oh my God. I didn't see this earlier. Feel mean complete. He's about to complete you with something new. Oh my God. Everybody hear me loud and clear. He's literally about to blow your mind. First he answered, then he went, then he went, then he touched. After he touched, then he spoke. First he answered, then he went, then he went, then he touched. After he touched, then he spoke. And then when this man get up, his life is totally different. And everybody get to see what nobody saw. Let me say that again. Everybody gets to see what nobody saw. See, we're so busy celebrating Paul, we don't realize that you couldn't have had a Paul without an Ananias. Oh my God. And some of y'all, you on the back scene. But God said, can I trust you behind the curtain to push somebody else in front of the curtain? Okay, okay. So now while you're standing, I got your attention. Now I need your attention. So many of you all have been coming here and you hear me preach. The question is, where did I get this from? Like, where did I, where did you learn scripture? from? Where did you get such revelation from? I got saved at 17. Look, look at me, look at me. It did not come from my family. My mother and my father, I'm the results of a teenage pregnancy. They got married to cover it up. My father ended up going to jail for murder 
And then when I went to go visit him in jail, he was now a black Hebrew. He had changed his name from Roscoe Hanna to Yehuda Ben Yama Judah. He told me that my name was no longer John Hanna, that your name is Ferez Ben Yama Judah, son of Yehuda. I said, first of all, that's too long, and I can't remember all that. You got to hear me? Okay, now look at me, look at me. So then I get saved at 17. When I get saved at 17, God has to send somebody to a corner to get me because I struggle with daddy issues. I struggle with the spirit of abandonment. I was in a house, and I was the only kid in the house that was a stepchild. You got to hear me. And I saw the blatant difference in the way that my stepfather treated his kids and me. I was the one that he was cussing out. I was the one that he was telling, you ain't going to never be nothing. You ain't S-H, you know the rest. You, you yellow M-F. You ain't, you know the rest. He would cuss me out to try to kill my self-esteem. But what he didn't know, that although I was in the corner, I had already been marked by God. And I'm telling some of y'all, the abuse did not erase the mark that is on your life. Okay, ready, ready? So who, who's gonna come and get me? Who is going to come and get me? I get saved at 17, and I'm gonna introduce you to somebody that you would never meet, but every time you see me on this stage, you see and you hear him. Allow me to introduce you to a man by the name of Edward Christian. Can you bring him up? This is Edward Christian. He was on the west side of Chicago. He was the one at 17 that cuffed me immediately. Immediately. He was the one, hey, hey look at me, that, that taught me how to read the Bible. He was the one that taught me how to research scripture. He gave me a Bible. It literally has his name on it. He literally signed it for me. I want the cameraman to get a good look at this. I want you to get a good look at this. This is the Bible that he gave me. And if you notice, it is literally falling to pieces because he was the one that taught me, you're going to have to have to learn this word. He was the one that taught me how to dig into scripture. If you get a good look, you can see how he even wrote side notes on the side from him teaching me certain things. You ready for this? He was the one that when he taught me, you, you, many of y'all read my book when I taught you the format of prayer, A-C-T-S-I, a acts, adoration, confession, thanks, supplication, intercession. He was the one that taught me that. I didn't get a revelation from heaven. He taught me that. And at the age of 17, I've kept it up until my 60s. Huh? 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 Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When I, when I, when I, when I, when I, when, when, when he, me, he, he would, he, he got a space in the basement of the church. He would bring in teenage boys and he would put us in the basement and he would just teach us the word of God. He, he would just teach us the word of God. When I went away to college, he would call down to Alabama State, make sure to check on me. When I came home from school, he would come by, he would check on me. You got to hear me. So when you see me, that was my Ananias. I'm your Paul, but I had an Ananias. I had somebody who believed in me, who came in the corner and got me, who gave me the word of God so that you could eat now. So every time I cook, I cook from the recipe that ever Christian gave me. Look at me, look at me. It gets better. It gets better. He did, he had 17 boys in the basement. Out of the 17 boys, look at me, at least 13 to 15 of us became preachers. Wait, 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 listen to me. He only got to live for 31 years. He only lived for 31 years. He's been gone for years, but his oil is still flowing. Wait, it gets better. Hey, Jeremy, can you come here for one minute? Jeremy, can you come on the stage with me for one minute? Jeremy, come up here. I want to introduce you to somebody, and I want you to see how God is. While, he, while, while we wait on him to come in, can you do me a favor? Can you just reach over, touch somebody and say, uh, I command you to get up and go. <laughs> come here, Jeremy. Come here. Come here, Jeremy. Come here. Come here. <laughs> this is crazy to me. This is crazy to me. This is crazy. Allow me. This is crazy to me. Allow me to introduce you. Step into the spotlight. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you. Um, I am his pastor. He's a member. This is Edward Christian's only son. So he fed me to make sure that I cover his seed. He fed me to make sure that I could pray for his son. He fed me to make sure that I speak over his purpose and his destiny. He fed me to make sure that I had the oil that was on his life. I won't be here, John, but you will. You will be able to cover what I cannot cover.
you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And you're arguing over titles and positions. You're arguing over stupid stuff when God is saying, but I need to put the oil on you because there's somebody that you're going to have to stand over and you're going to have to make sure that they be everything that I created them to be. You didn't even ask for this. You, didn't, you couldn't have written this down. Nobody could envision this. This is nobody but the hand of God. Look at me. My heart is my heart is broken because I'm watching the church major in minors. Who got the mic? Who don't have the mic? Who get to preach? Who didn't get to preach? Who up front? Who not up front? Listen, listen, we had a gentleman that worked for us by the name of Charles Johnson. Charles Johnson worked for Magic Johnson. He worked in corporate America, and then I, the Lord told me to, to cast my net. He came to work for me for seven years. He said, Pastor Hannah, I've been in corporate America, and I've been in the church. He said, I want you to hear me. What I see in church is that your people are fighting over three things. Power, position, and money. They want power. They want position and they want money. But is there anybody? I don't need your power. I don't want your position. I don't even need your money. All I want is God. And I want God to get the glory out of my life. So Jeremy, so Jeremy, isn't it crazy how you came here when your daughter was a baby? And your daughter, we don't have any kids. But your daughter is the one that encourages my wife. Your daughter, this, this oil keeps flowing. Your daughter is the one that texts my wife. My wife be like, you will never believe who texts me. I be like, who? Jeremy's daughter. I say, Edward Christian, the oil is still flowing. Question, 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 question. Who's waiting on you? Who's waiting on you? Your name is about to be called. Ooh. Ask your neighbor, give me your full name. Give me your full name. Give me your full name. Get their name. Get their name. Repeat it back to them. 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 Make sure you got their full name. Because I'm about to push your name. Hey, Jeremy, I'm about to push your name. Hey, Derek, I'm about to push your name. Hey, Denzel, I'm about to push your name. Hey, Avenue, I'm about to push your name Ure be 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 shake rotora ma 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 do me a favor i need you to make sure you got the whole name cuz on antoine i'm about to push your name i'm about to push your name and when I say your name I'm gonna call angels to get behind your name I'm about to call you back up in the spirit realm I'm gonna pray that you go further than go I go hey Tom I'm about to push your name look at me do me a favor I want you to make sure you got the right name I need you to turn and say your name is and say their name say my 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 name, say my name. Don't play with me, say my name. Cause when you say my name, something gonna change immediately. When you say my name, my salary gonna change immediately. When you say my name, the anointing is gonna increase immediately. Say my name, say my name. Don't play with my name, but the Lord put my name in your mouth. The Lord put my name in your mouth. The Lord put my name in your mouth. Mouth. And when you speak, bones are about to come together. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Okay, okay. He went in the house and he started prophesying to Ananias. He began to speak over Ananias. And I want you to see what happened. What happened after he spoke. Because after he speaks, after your name is called, and after we speak, you need to hear me. Some things, I need you to hear me. You ready? Hold on music. I need to make sure you hear me. It's going to happen. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Immediately. I feel my help coming now. I feel my help coming. I feel like for somebody, he made you wait until the last month to get you to what he's about to give you. I feel like with somebody, he waited until the end of the year to make sure your new year be better. Oh, oh my God. He waited. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Ready? Ready? Let me show you immediately. Immediately. Bring this scripture up. Immediately. The person who name you have, I need you to turn around and just say, immediately. 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 Immediately, Can I give you five things that are going to change for you? Bring them up on the screen. It's all in the scripture. Number one, number one. You're going to get back what you lost. Number two, you're about to get up out of a slump. You're about to literally get up out of a, a standstill position. You're about to get up. Number three, you're about to be baptized. What does that mean? You're about to get another spiritual encounter that you've never had before in your life. Number four, you're about to get your strength back. And number five, your circle is about to change. Hold on, I say, these are the five things that are about to happen to you. When I call your name, I'm telling you immediately. Okay, I need you to make sure you got the right name if nobody's saying your name I need you to go give somebody your name but this is the wrong time to hold your own name I need you to make sure that somebody got your name turn around and say and repeat their name say my name say my name say my name say it loud too I mean when you say it I need you to say it with confidence I mean when you say it I need you to scream it when you say it I need you to act like you my biggest cheerleader when you say it I need demons to get scared when you say it I need the devil to let me go say my name don't you play with me on the count of three I need you to scream their name as loud as you can and then I need you to put a praise behind their name because somebody your life is about to change immediately I answered yes I did I went yes I did I touched yes I did I I spoke yes I did and they changed immediately <sighs> say my name say my name I'm begging you to say my name I'm so ready to get up you don't know what I've been going through somebody you've been having suicidal thoughts because the enemy wanted to kill you in the corner the devil wanted you to be down Sabrina but God sent you in the building so the right person could say your name if you in your 20s you better open your mouth and get ready I pray those of you in your 20s that you don't have to wait as long as I waited I pray for those of you in your 30s you ain't gotta wait until your 40s to get it he gonna give it to you in your 30s I pray for those in your 40s and 50s he's about to put accelerate on your name on the count of three randaramase rosoto bashatarabase Hey, you ready? Don't play with me. Look at the one that got your name. Tell them, don't play with me. It's too much at stake. My millions are locked up in your vocal cords. My next is locked up in your vocal cords. Either you speak it or I choke you. What you want? What you want? So God, I've obeyed you and I preach your word.
and I got your people up and they've heard you and now they're ready to go and now they're ready to touch and now they're ready to speak whatever they speak God I pray that you release the spirit of immediately in this building I pray that you release the spirit of acceleration I want things to move fast in the last month of this year God I want somebody to take off I need them to take off at full speed ahead I need them to go at a speed that they've never gone on as long as they've been in the face of this earth but I need it to be a takeoff anointing I need your business to take off I need your name to take off I need your ministry to take off I need your family to take off I need everything that's connected to you to get them to say say my name say my name and put a praise behind my name because my name go with a praise don't you play with me on the count of three you say their name one two three go immediately say it Yay! There it is! Anybody feel a spirit of immediately coming on you? Those of you that believe that he's enlarging in your territory, get out of your seat. Walk the aisle. Walk the altar. And start saying yes, Lord, yes. Yay! It's getting ready to happen. haven't seen is haven't heard what God got in store for you get in the spirit y'all yeah. immediately Listen as you walk and touch somebody and say, immediately. It's not going to take you much longer. Your delay days are over. It's your season of coming out of your corner. It's your season of coming out of your corner. It's your season of coming out of your corner. Come on, the hand of God is on your life. I got you today. There's a click in the spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, on your way back to your seat, touch somebody and just say the words immediately. Your address is changing. Your zip code is changing. Your circle is changing. Come on y'all, I'm gonna walk these aisles for a few minutes. Cause I gotta get some of y'all out of your comfort zone. Come on, say the word immediately. Come on, say the word immediately. Come on, we out here now. Your job is changing. Your circle is changing. Come on, I'm back here in the back. I need to hear the same praise in the back I hear in the front. Everybody open your mouth and shout immediately. Come on, and you'll make your way back towards the seat. Everybody lift your hands. Let me hear your worship. Yeah. He answered, then he went. He went, and then he touched. He touched, and then he spoke. He spoke, and then things changed. He answered, then he went. He went, then he touched. 
he touched, then he spoke. And after he spoke, things changed. Immediately. He answered, then he went. He went, then he touched. He touched, then he spoke. And when he spoke, things changed immediately. Come on, let's put an I in front of it. Everybody repeat after me. I answered, then I went. After I went, then I touched. After I touched, then I spoke. And after I spoke, things changed immediately. Lift your hands, let me hear your worship. Let me hear your worship. Valencia, I want you to start at the beginning of the song, yes. Will your heart and soul say yes? Will your spirit still say yes? Yeah. Yes. There is more that I require of thee will your heart and soul say yes now will your heart and soul say yes wow Will your spirit still Everybody let's go tell the Lord yes Lift your hands yes, and just keep saying yes Yes If I told If I told you, you What I really need I really need Wow From thee What you gonna tell me Would your heart and soul Say yes. So just say. Yes. Come on, you say yes, Lord. I'll obey Jesus. My soul says. See yes. Come on, you tell him yes. I, I will say Jesus. But this time, I made up in my mind. I made up in my mind. I say. You tell him yes.
that I require to be. Say that again. There is more that I require of thee. Say there is more that I require of thee. Calling you higher, he's calling you higher, he's calling you higher, calling you higher. Close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes. Can I use your gift? Can I get the glory out of your skill? Can I even have your pain, your disappointment? Can I have your abuse, your neglect? Can you give me your past? and all the misery that go with it. Can I turn your misery into a message? Can I flip your pain into your passion? Mm. Close your eyes. Can I use you to reach some young girls? Can I use you to go get some of these boys off these streets? Or you want to just stay in church and play church? What you want to do? You want to impact the world or you want to fight over a pulpit or a mic? Close your eyes, lift your hands and start telling the Lord, yes. Can I use your, ma your marriage? Can I use your divorce? Can I use your incarceration? Come on, tell the Lord, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, everyone stand. Hold the music one minute. Hold the music. Hold the music. Lift your hands in this building. Obey me and close your eyes. For I am your Lord and I stand in front of you waiting on your response. Moving forward as of today, can I use you for my glory? Will you go where I tell you to go and do what I tell you to do? And will you do it privately that everyone doesn't have to know your moves? I need you to go into the alleys and the highways and can I put somebody next to you and you share your story or do you keep holding your story because you're embarrassed of what, what you've been through? Can I use your story to save somebody? If he can use this, say yes, Lord. I need you to pay attention. He's literally about to bring someone into a private conversation that's going to be going through what you've been through. And the Lord's going to say, now open your bag and feed them from your pain and your misery. Lift your hands, close your eyes, and God is in your face, listening to the words that come out of your mouth. Can you get over yourself and give me glory? Can you handle the pressure that go with your story? Come on, tell the Lord yes. Yes. Tell him again, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Some of y'all, this pulpit ain't your ministry. Tell the Lord yes. yes. Your ministry is outside the four walls. This is only your filling station when you come and get filled up. But your congregation is in the world. <laughs> come on, tell the Lord yes. There are 15 people in this building. I came to get you today. I ain't literally answered. I'm here today. I got to lay my hands on you and I got to pray with you. Because your life has to flip immediately. You a game changer. Hear me clearly. There's someone in the building. The enemy has tried to kill you on numerous occasions. But God has kept you in the land of the living because his hand is on your life. I told you, your response is up to you. You can stand there if you want to, or you can come and get God and let him change your circle. There are 15 of you in this building. When I count to three, I need you to get up here like it's a 911 emergency because when you move, your house will change. Your family will change. Your circle will change. Start moving right now. One, two, three. Get up here. Get up here. And stand right here. Get up here. Hallelujah. Get up here. Get up here. I'm waiting on you. It's too much at stake for you to sit in your seat. Let's count down. It's three more brothers that's supposed to be up here. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. I need my screen works person to get Proverbs 1 on the screen. Proverbs 1 on the screen. Proverbs 1, NIV. This is so weird to me, but the Lord won't let me leave it. And when you get it, I need you to go to 1 and 8, and I need you to get ready to read down. I don't know who this is for, but the Lord told me to give it to this service. Proverbs, NIV. Can they get it for me? They can't get it. Proverbs 1, we're going to start at verse 8. For those of you that are on this altar, and for those in the building, I'm standing here and I, want, I didn't want to do this. I was like, no, I need you to read this now. This word has been on me to release it, and I have to give it to you. I'm waiting on it. Is it coming? Okay. So while we wait on that word, let's repeat this prayer. Everybody on the altar, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I invite Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of this confession, I am saved. Give God a hand praise for your salvation. What's up? You ready? You ready? All right, so look at the screen. I need to, I don't, I just got to obey God. Can y'all free me to be spiritual? <laughs> okay, it's going to come up on the screen. We're going to start at Proverbs um, 1 and 8. It says, listen, my son, to your father's instructions and do not forsake your mother's teachings. 
There are a garland of grace on your head and a chain to adore your neck. Verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. Go to the next verse. Verse 11. If they say, come along with us, let's lie in wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Go to verse 12. Let's swallow them alive like the grave, the whole like those who go down to the pit. Let's go. We will get all the sorts of valuable things. It's called smash and grab. It's called robbery. You sticking up people. And they're inviting you to get in the car with them and go stick them up to get their valuable things. And fill your house with plunder. And many of you all are allowing your children to bring, bring the plunder in your house. Cast lots with us. We will all share the lot. Let's go. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. God is about to break up your circle. Go to the next verse. <laughs> For their feet rush into evil. They are swift to shed blood. Go to the next verse. How useless to spread a net wherever bird can see it. They keep casting a net trying to get innocent people to fly in it. These men will lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush, here's the Bible, only themselves. When you do this, you're setting a trap for yourself. Such are the path of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. You'll get the gain, but you'll lose your life. For everyone under, I, don't, I can't explain this. I don't know who you are, but you know people that are robbing, you know people who are looting. And they're now going to begin to get you to go with them. And the Lord told me to release the warning. Your life is at stake. Everybody that know a, a man or a boy, say their name right now. We cover you right now. And we decree and we declare that God will put a no in your spirit that you will not go after innocent people, but you will work hard for your own gain. And it is so in Jesus' name. Do me a favor. Everybody turn around and walk down this aisle. Give God a praise. That was tight. Have a seat. The Lord told me some of the robbers have been coming to my church. Have a seat. Have a seat. The Lord told me, you know the robbers, and that I had to pray and warn you. Let's get our tithes and our offering ready. How many of y'all believe in tithing? How many of y'all believe in tithing? Listen to me. I'm going to give you three seeds. Listen to me. I want to call this your secret seed. What you sow in secret, he's going to reward you openly. I'm going to give you three seeds. You decide which one you're going to give. Is it 25? Is it 50 or 100? Out of the three seeds, which can, can you afford to give? I want you to ask God, which seed am I supposed to sow? And I want you to sow it. Those of us that tithe, that's our tithes. You get your tithes ready. How do you give? You give, with, you give with the QR code. You text and give. But everybody get a seed in your hand. Those online, you can give. Come on. Out of the three seeds, and I want you to entitle it my secret seed. This is my secret seed. Wow. If there's a young man next to you, around you, can you reach over just and say, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. 
Come on, reach over, touch another young man, say, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Is it 25, is it 50, or is it 100? Come on, get your seat ready and stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Those online, you can give also. Some of y'all still texting, trying to give. I know that some of y'all have Andrews and it take a while. So we'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. We wait patiently. Come on. <laughs> I know that Andrews spirit when I see it. Come on, come on. Come on, get your seat ready. Get your seat ready. If you need an envelope, if you're going to give cash or write a check, you can get an envelope. You can raise your hand and my team will give you an envelope. Come on, I have some hands raised over here. On your way out the building, you can actually see deposit boxes to your right and your left and you can give. Come on, everybody stand to your feet. Y'all just sit down. What that mean? You're not giving nothing? <laughs> Come on, stand to your feet. I'm going to let Pastor Jamon do this. I have to go in the lobby and embrace those of you all that want to wish me happy birthday and all of that. But tonight at 5 o'clock, they did a documentary that's going to be released on YouTube. He'll explain all of that to you, and then we're going to get out of here. And he's going to do the declaration over your finances. All right? Other than that, I will meet the rest of you all in the lobby area. Come on. Get your seat ready. You ready? Lift it up to the Lord. Come on, everybody. Say, when we sow, we say, I'm a tither and a giver. I'm blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I'm living in Ephesians 3.20. How long? Come on, say it like you mean it. For the rest of my life. Listen, give pastor a chance to get in the hallway for just a moment. Let me cover you with a blessing. How many of you received the word of the Lord today? Come on, how many have great expectation today? Receive this blessing and this covering. I want to give you, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity uh, to make sure that you greet and meet pastor. If you brought him a card, you can give it to him in the hallway. If you want to sow into his life, that is to give him an offering, uh, you like birthday gifts, you can scan the code on the screen and scroll down to his name and be able to sow into his life for his birthday. Show some love and say happy birthday to Pastor Hannah. All right, tonight at five o'clock on YouTube channel, share it and watch it. It's the behind the scenes stories of how we went from the West Side to the world. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you peace. May you walk in the victory and complete your assignment and have favor everywhere you go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. See you Tuesday and or Thursday. Watch.